Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversation Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you walked in. Join us once again. Well, we made it to the first hump day of March. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Wednesday. We have the truth of the Davis Mary Ellen Zaganovich in today's entertainment spotlight. You've been part of my conversation with tech expert Andrea Smith discussing ways we can stay connected. Enjoy today's program. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Wednesday headlines in national news. Biden's State of the Union comes amid war abroad and discord in U.S. Facing disquiet at home and danger abroad, President Joe Biden delivered his first State of the Union address at a steeply challenging moment for the nation, aiming to navigate out of the pandemic, reboot his stalled domestic agenda, and confront Russian aggression. The White House had conceived Tuesday night's speech as an opportunity to highlight the improving coronavirus outlook, rebrand Biden's domestic policies, and show a path to lower costs for families grappling with soaring inflation. But it took on new significance with Russia's invasion of Ukraine and nuclear saber rattling by Vladimir Putin. Biden spoke about the importance of the United States as a leader in the world, standing up for values, standing up for global norms. In an interview with CNN and Reuters, Zelensky said he urged Biden to deliver a strong and useful message about Russia's invasion. Ahead of the speech, the White House announced that Ukrainian ambassador to the U.S. would join First Lady Jill Biden in the galleries to watch Biden's address. Biden addressed a mass optional crowd in the House chamber, one sign of the easing coronavirus threat. Rising energy prices as a result of Russia's war in Ukraine risk rising inflation in the U.S., which is already at the highest level in 40 years, eating into people's earnings and threatening the economic recovery from the pandemic. And while the geopolitical crisis in Eastern Europe may have helped to cool partisan tensions in Washington, it can erase the political and cultural discord that is casting doubt on Biden's ability to deliver on his pledge to promote national unity. White House officials acknowledge the mood of the country is sour, citing the lingering pandemic and inflation. Biden, in his speech, highlighted progress from a year ago, with the majority of the U.S. population now vaccinated and millions more people at work, but also acknowledged the job is not yet done, a recognition of American discontent. The speech came as progress on many of Biden's other legislative priorities remained stalled on Capitol Hill after Joe Manchin scuttled the sweeping Build Back Better spending bill that Biden had championed last fall. As part of his pitch to voters, Biden was to resurrect components of the legislation, but with a new emphasis on how proposals like extending the child tax credit and bringing down child care costs could bring relief to families as prices rise. He also outlined how his climate change proposals will cut costs for lower- and middle-income families and create new jobs. In international news, Russian forces escalate attacks on Ukraine's civilian areas. Russian forces escalated their attacks on crowded urban areas on Tuesday, bombarding the central square in Ukraine's second-largest city and Kyiv's main TV tower in what the country's president called a blatant campaign of terror. Nobody will forgive. Nobody will forget. President Zelensky vowed after the bloodshed on the square in the second largest city. Ukrainian authorities said five people were killed in the attack on the TV tower, which is a couple miles from central Kyiv and a short walk from numerous apartment buildings. A TV control room and power substation were hit, and at least some Ukrainian channels briefly stopped broadcasting. In more national news, activism grows nationwide in response to school book bans. Over the past year, book challenges and bans have reached levels not seen in decades, according to officials at the American Library Association, the National Coalition Against Censorship, and other advocates for free expression. According to PEN America, which has been tracking legislation across the country, dozens of bills have been proposed that restrict classroom reading and discussion. In business news, ruble plummets as sanctions bite, sending Russians to banks, leading uneasy depositors to line up at banks and ATMs this week in a country that has seen more than one currency disaster in the post-Soviet era. The Russian currency plunged about 30% against the U.S. dollar after Western nations announced unprecedented moves to block some Russian banks from the SWIFT international payment system and to restrict Russia's use of its massive foreign currency reserves. The exchange rate later recovered ground after quick action by Russia's central bank. But the economic squeeze got tighter when the U.S. fleshed out the sanctions to immobilize any assets of the Russian central bank in the U.S. or held by Americans. And finally, in entertainment news, Hollywood halts releases in Russia, including The Batman. Warner Brothers is halting the release of The Batman in Russia just days before it was to open in theaters there as Hollywood moved to cease distribution plans in the country following Putin's invasion of Ukraine. 
Warner Brothers, the Walt Disney Company, and Sony Pictures said on Monday that they would pause the release of their films in Russia. Each studio has significant upcoming releases that have been set to debut internationally in the coming weeks. The Batman, one of the year's most anticipated films, launches Friday in North America and many overseas territories, including Russia. In light of the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine, Warner Media is pausing the release of its feature film The Batman in Russia, a spokesperson for the studio said in a statement. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's all time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Tiganovich. Mary Ellen, take it away. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Remain relaxed and calm. Release the temptation to engage in conflict with those who have differing beliefs or opinions. Learn to see such conflicts as opportunities for you to let go of trying to convince others of your beliefs. Detach yourself from any struggle while you focus on staying centered and calm. Complete this exercise any time you feel others are trying to unduly influence you. When you are able to reconnect with whomever you had a conflict with, find neutral ground to establish a productive friendship. If this is not a possibility, you may have to just let go. Today, avoid conflict by detaching from your emotional responses and enjoy the day. We are part of my conversation coming up with tech expert Andrea Smith in today's entertainment spotlight. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daddy News. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your entertainment spotlight. Tech expert Andrea Smith rejoined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to share some ways to keep connected. Here's a bit of our conversation. What are some of the best devices out there right now to be able to keep us connected with one another? So the way I look at it is your smartphone is really your foundation, right? It's the one device that keeps you connected to everything that you do. So you want the absolute best and latest technology, and you want it running on the largest nationwide 5G network. So I would recommend the new Samsung Galaxy S22 lineup from T-Mobile. And, (coughs) excuse me, really good news now, new and existing customers can get the Galaxy S22 or S22 Plus for free or up to $1,000 off the Galaxy S22 Ultra with 24 monthly bill credits when you trade in an eligible device on Magenta Max or an eligible Sprint plan. So that's really the foundation of all of your connectivity. It keeps you connected to everything you do. Can you share some ideas for those who are maybe looking for those at-home office tools to help elevate their communication while at home? Absolutely. You know, all of us have kind of tried to carve out a little productive work from home space in the home. And sometimes it's not easy. You know, you've got to move from room to room, depending on what other people are doing. And companies are really taking note of this. Companies like Cisco are making it easier to work from home. They've got a product called WebEx Desk Mini. It's an all-in-one portable collaboration device that you can set up anywhere. It's got an interactive 1080p display, an HD camera, full range speaker, and a microphone that removes background noise so you can hold important video meetings and calls in any room of the house. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News, but back to get on tomorrow with more news, truth of the day with Mary Ellen Teganovich, and of course your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daddy News today. Let's make today amazing. Take care.